from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who is here to keep you company, to take your mind off of stuff and be a little bit confusing because I'm more than a little bit confused. You could say, I'm an, you could call me the auto baffler because that was, I just listened to an intro where I mentioned that. Uh, the baffles are automatic when they come out of me. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And these sponsors were what enabled me to be here for you free twice a week. So if you can remember when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow or that coffee pot, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thanks. Hey, everybody. It's Scoots. I was just wondering, we're doing a big push for our Patreon right now. We've lost a lot of patrons because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, and uh, with hurdles for regular people, is also a hurdle for the podcast. So if you're in a financial position where you could support the podcast you listen to for free, I realize it's a wild, wild idea to pay for a free podcast. But those that percentage, small percentage of people that pay for the free podcast, they keep it free for everybody. So if you can afford to support the show at $5, 10 $20, a month or support it annually. You like listen to the show a lot. You say, wait a second, I listen to Sleep With Me more than I listen to my music subscription service, more than I listen to or watch these two streaming services. Please consider like pausing one of those memberships and supporting the podcast because your help, it's huge. It, it enables me to do what I do night after night after night, put all the work, uh, my heart and my soul into the show. So please consider supporting the show if you can. And if you can't, don't worry. There are people out there. And I, I don't know the statistics. The last time I looked, it was like one patron provides about a thousand downloads a month uh, for other people. So your support could help a thousand, two thousand other people fall asleep every single month. So it, whatever it is, it's a huge help. If you're in a position to do so, maybe think about pausing one of those subscription services you don't use every single month. Uh, if you use Sleep With Me every single night, multiple times a week, multiple times a night, please consider Consider supporting the show. It'd be a huge help. There's tons of cool bonus content and stuff like that. We're about to launch our Discord community. So there's tons of other reasons to get into it. But in the end, a lot of people choose to support the show because it's there for them. And it feels good to know you're supporting it for you and a ton of other people. Uh, at least that's what I hear from all the other patrons. So please consider it sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N. Thanks. All right, everybody. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And I don't know if you've ever felt burnout. Like sometimes when I have a bunch of deadlines coming up and I'm thinking about them a lot, I'm working a lot and I'm feeling a lot of feelings about my thoughts, the deadlines, the work. That's when and then I have family stuff and then something unexpected comes up. Uh, that's when I start to feel burned out. And it can be really stressful, right? And, and it can get in the way of my sleep and get, get in the way of being, me being present for for my daughter. And it can just be really unpleasant and challenging. And normally we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of the roles in our life can lead to feeling burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. And that's where therapy comes in for me because I have a set time every single week where I know I have a safe place to talk it over with someone trusted who's going to be there for me, to listen to me, to help me get to the bottom of it. Therapy is a really important keystone in my life. And if you're feeling burnt out or you don't want to feel burnt out or you want tools to deal with being burned out or talking someone to talk to about it that's there to listen and to help you get through it and deal with it and put it in perspective, just like anyone in my personal life, I'd say, why don't you try BetterHelp? Uh, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try. Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-E. 
H E L P dot com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, one part podcast where I got to pick up the pace because I need your help. I need the listeners who support the sponsors because that's what keeps the show free for anybody who wants to listen any place. Over 400 and whatever, 70 episodes in the archives, all because of the listeners who supported the sponsors. And that's why I take a second to thank listeners like Erica, who supported Com. Thank you so much, Erica. Supported Com. Let Com know about it. Let me know about it. Please. If you support a sponsor, just be like Erica. Thank you so much, Erica. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. And there's links to resources you could connect with right now if you're having a tough time right in our show notes. And it's about being a part of positive change with our actions, saying Black Lives Matter, saying Stop API Hate, saying Support Ukraine. And there's links to resources, uh, to ways you can learn more and support uh, right in our show notes. And it's it's about uh, supporting and getting involved with our actions as well for me. And one of the organizations you're going to be hearing about all year is the Midnight Mission. You know, the Midnight Mission uh, is trying to move people from homelessness into housing by providing the basic emergency and life-saving services. And you could always learn more at their website, which will be linked to in the show notes. But we are doing a lot of activities that are fun and supporting people experiencing homelessness. And all you need to do is sign up for our free free newsletter. You'll get more access to me than anywhere else other than Patreon for free and have fun, including live events starting this month, uh, April at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. So sign up for that newsletter. Please, please sign up for that newsletter. It's free. I'm going to be doing live streams. We're going to be putting together hygiene kits. I'm going to be doing live shows. If we build it enough, I'll, I could come to your town, but it's going to take uh, people just signing up for this newsletter and being a part of the community around the show. Uh, please do that for me. If you're hearing me and you do one thing, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission, please sign up for that. It's going to make a huge difference in a lot of people's lives and you'll have fun and you'll be empowered to be a part of positive change. So support us supporting the Midnight Mission and wherever you are in the world, we'll be able to support you supporting people experiencing homelessness in your community too. Uh, that's it. Mystery Bard, a lot of people who help out on the show, who are they? Chris Posty Poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. Get support, dear scooter. And support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud That we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and a like banana Leah does the transcripts Thanks, Mystery Bard. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Please sign up for our free, fun newsletter supporting people experiencing homelessness, live versions of Sleep With Me, live watch-throughs, listen-throughs, all at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. And that's it. Let's get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, uh, whether that's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings. So anything you're thinking about in, in, on your mind about the past, the present, or the future. Anything you're feeling physically that's coming up for you. So thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, any changes in time or temperature or routine. Uh, stuff going on. Mysterious <laughs> my, 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 like uh, stuff on your mind that's not on your mind. Or like uh, 
was I wonder if the original version uh, I talk about songs every once in a while I'm sure this one's come up before but it was uh, you're always on my mind right I think I talked about it recently I think is that a Willie Nelson song or James Taylor song for some reason I get James Taylor Willie Nelson then John Denver not mixed up in my mind clearly I could see all three of them but some of their songs, I'm pretty sure it's a Willie Nelson song. All, always, 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 like I would rewrite it. I'd say always, 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 always on my mind. Always, or, and you say, Scooch, you put one more word in there? I'd say, you, 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 I could put you in there depending on who the you is that's listening, right? Or you could put like you in a self-referential way, which you say, well, that's too much truth. Uh, so... For me, at least, I'm not ta- speaking for any of you, <laughs> but really, I see. Well, that's getting too much to the point. So I don't think that's so- songs can't be that direct uh, when I'm making them up about making them up. But uh, if it was about you, that's keeping me awake. I could do that, or I'd say everything too is also always, always, everything, always, 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 everything, always, I'm, I'm always you. Or it could just be you, you, you. That doesn't work, though. It does sound like it could be that, though. Like, always, 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 always. That could be another shirt we could do. This is a new thing with Sleep With Me. Like, these shirts that go on and on and on. I forgot the party one. But that could be another shirt we could do for our Midnight Mission fundraiser. Always, always. How many always should we have? Uh, Go ahead and vote. Uh, Oh, boy. The truth comes out. I'm always on my mind. Uh, they, 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 they could be put that one on the back, though. It's true, though. You know, I'm just a human being, and not, not I'm just mostly being, not doing. Most human thinking, overthinking, always on my mind. And if you, so, I'm glad you're here. If you could relate to any of that, or you, you were like, oh boy. Who is ma- who, what, what did I just get myself into? I thought this was, uh, I, as soon as you said Willie Nelson, my ears picked up, uh, or my, uh, you know, ears perked up or picked up, or I picked up something, you know, 420 style to celebrate Willie. I can't do any of that, but, you know, that, like, because uh, because I was always, I had you, as in me, always, always on my mind so much, I said, okay. I got to deal with it through other means, through uh, help for other people and uh, taking a little tiny steps at a time. But uh, you might be in a different place. So, and that's great. I'm ha- I, love, I love hearing from my, my listeners that say it's 420 somewhere. And so that's, I'm ha- like, uh, so anyway, wh- where are you, right? Holy cow. Whether, whatever time it is. You might say, what is, what in the hay? Okay, so whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to take your mind off of it and keep you company so you could fall asleep. And the way I do it is I'm going to, uh, I got a safe place here. I'm smoothing it. I'm patting it. I'm rubbing it down. I'm sending it across the deep, dark night or offering it across the deep, dark night. Uh, like uh, sending across the deep dark night using lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones. So it means my voice is a little bit different, but it's also somewhat lulling, somewhat soothing, somewhat forgettable. Uh, but creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. We just had those back to back there before we even, I even explained what they were. You got them. I, I, I don't know which one. I think when you use always 50,000 times in a two minutes, that's probably superfluous. And pointless was me trying to, you know, I made it about me. Then I tried to make it not about me, which is pointless. You say, Scoots, it's all like, uh, that's what we relate to. It's always about you because I understand because it's always about me. And I say, wow, you, we really get one another, don't we? I'm so glad you're here. I'm not kidding. Right now I'm feeling a connection with all you listeners very, very deep. I hope you can feel it too. I'm almost tearing up because I feel less alone because of moments like this. Because we're not alone. We got that stuff going on, right? And that's some of the stuff that keeps us up in the deep, dark night. I I was alluding, before I went on that always tangent, it's like I've been having trouble sleeping. So I know what it, how it feels. That's why I make the show is because I know how it feels in the deep, dark night. 
in the wee hours of the morning, in the middle hours of the morning, and all that stuff. Uh, even when I'm practicing good self-care, I'm always, 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 always on my mind. Uh, and sometimes there, even all that meditation, journaling, all that stuff, uh, sometimes it's just hard to fall asleep. And so that's one of the reasons I make the show. I know how it feels and I want to help. But the other side of it is, if you can get to a place like me where most of the time my bedtime routine does work uh, and most of the time I can get a good night's sleep and most of the time uh, I'm looking forward to bedtime because I have my routine and it's comforting is uh, that uh, like if I can help with that so that because you deserve a good night's sleep. I really truly believe that. And this time it's not about me because I wouldn't sit, you know, I could, I can make, I have gripes with myself, but I can't offer that to myself. I mean, I do. I practice what I, I talk about, but not so directly. But you do deserve a good night's sleep. I really do believe that. I guess because I do want it for myself. I know how important it is for you. But also, we live in the same world. And if you get the rest you need, your life's going to be more manageable. And our world will be a better place to be in. That's where this podcast came from, like the lack of sleep and the challenges. I still want to do something so the world could be a better place to be in a little bit for us sleepless people who are always on our own minds. Uh, there's no shame in that. It's just, uh, you know, it's just especially at bedtime. It's more of like, uh, what's up with it? What, you know, you were always, I was always on my mind all day long, too. So if I can help, uh, I'd like to. Now, if you're new, you may be skeptical or doubtful. I think I probably uh, helped with those skepticism and doubt, right? This is a very different show. It's not a straightforward bedtime story where I do a rub-a-dub-dub, and I'm going to count down and calm and soothe you, and you're going to fall asleep. This is more of your friend here to keep you company so that you could fall asleep. I'm here to take your mind off of stuff, less so to put you to sleep, and I'm here to talk about stuff in a way that you could optionally listen to it or barely listen. There's no pressure for you to listen to me because, uh, you know, you, I've, I've, I'm, I, I, I've, uh, I haven't totally stopped making sense. It's just that uh, I'm making sense with, I don't even know what a hay penny is, but when they say Scoots is making sense but with a hay penny and he doesn't know what a hay penny is, that's like the kind of sense I'm making. I'm trying to make sense with something I don't understand anyway. And I know pe people have told me what a hay penny was, but then, I, you know, I forgot because I just picture it. Uh, sometimes I, I picture different stuff. Sometimes it's wooden, I think a wooden nickel. Sometimes it's a penny with hay on it. Then sometimes it's some sort of symbolic thing that I'm exchanging for hay. But it, or a punch. My favorite thing is when it's a punchline to a joke I don't have, and I say, "Hey, Penny!" Like, uh, and I do a finger thing, and the Penny laughs. Uh, and so, see, even that you say, "Okay, he was kind of making sense." So you don't need to listen to me. I'm not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your boar burr, your neighbor, your boar friend. I'm here to keep you company so that you could fall asleep and you don't have to listen to me. Another thing that can throw new people off, other than the fact the show doesn't make any sense, it has like a, it's going nowhere fast. It's a bit confusing. The structure of the show definitely uh, throws people off because I get, and I guess that's fine. Like the structure does not work for everybody. It, it actually like a, it, the, the, like it, but it works for the people that it works for or you adjust to it. So if you're new, just give it a few tries and see how it goes. It's no pressure. I hope the show works for you, but it does not work for everyone. So even the structure of the show, just get out to, I'm going to explain why the show's structured the way it is, but just give it a go and see how it goes. So the show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, so you can feel welcome and seen. And, you, and then I say something goofy. So you say, okay, I feel welcome and seen, but it's by somebody that's a silly and goofy. So that's important to me. Then there's support for the show. Uh, so the show can be free versus paid or part of like an exclusive deal somewhere. So the show, uh, the sponsors and the listeners who support the show, it's just a reality, right? Uh, uh, that uh, That's how I can be here for free. Uh, offering this podcast twice a week, wherever you want to listen to it. 
So the sponsors do that. Then we have support for the listeners of the show and support for the communities around the show because that's important to me. And again, part of like me putting so much work into this show is because your sleep's important, but me kind of helping who I can is important too. And it stays true to the mission of we're all together here in the deep, dark night. Now, if you if you find this podcast, you gave it two or three tries, and either the style or the structure of the show doesn't work, there's a lot of other sleep podcasts I have listed at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you that you could check out. So there's that. So that's the structure show. It starts off like that. Then there's an intro. And the intro goes from, I don't know, six or eight minutes to 20, 25 minutes. And some reason, when people really dislike the start of the show, they lump the intro in with uh, self-congratulations and inside jokes and the sponsor stuff, which is, is uh, understandable. But the intro is actually a show within a show. I mean, where else are you going to get 4,000 always, you know? Except, I guess, well, if you put that song on replay, I guess, uh, eventually you'd get 4,000. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not bragging that I said always 4,000 times. Oh, the one, the, the, the one star reviews and the emails, you should see my emails on a good day. It's like, uh, so, um, what was I saying? I don't even know. Cause I got mixed up, but, uh, the intro goes on and on and on. Oh, it's a show within a show. So for most listeners, it's a part of their bedtime and wind down routine, a transition from being awake time to getting settled in to eventually later on in the show going to sleep. And that's just a reality of what most of the time works for most people, right? So the show is a slow progression into bedtime. It's not made to put you to sleep right away. Like I said, it's not even really made to put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep. Or if you can't sleep, I'm here to keep you company because it's lonely in the deep, dark night, whether you're awake or asleep, uh, ironically. But so that's why the intro goes on and on and on is, uh, is part of that. Now, there is 2% of people that skip ahead. Uh, sometimes it's 3%, but somewhere 2 or 3% that skip ahead starts to show it around 20 minutes. And then there's a couple thousand plus people that support the show on Patreon and listen to story-only episodes. But there's an equal amount of people on Patreon that listen to the intro-only episodes. So it kind of balances out. But so that's the intro. Like, so as you become a regular listener, you may find you listen to the, like, what are you going to do during the intro? Are you going to be in bed getting comfortable? Are you going to do some other chill activity? Are you going to get ready for bed while you listen to the intro? It's all your preference and you can discover it. But the show is structured that way so it can be free, reliable, twice a week on wherever podcast app you want to listen to it and have a bunch of episodes in the archives. That's the structure. So then after the intro is business, again, sponsor support uh, to, to support that stuff. And then it'll be our bedtime story, which tonight will be our episodically modular series, Spice for uh, Spice Friends, which you can listen to in any order, though tonight I think it'll be episode 11. And then we'll finish off the show with some thank yous. All told, I'll be here a little bit over an hour is the ideal length of the show for me. Uh, so that you, there's no pressure to fall asleep. You fall asleep whenever you want, or some people like to listen to the show over, you know, in chunks. You'll discover what works for you. I'm here to keep you company and uh, take you, off, like, really, I'm here to take you off. Like, that's really what works for me. This show and doing it, when I'm here for you, I'm not thinking about me. Like, I guess I am, though. Huh. Never thought about I mean, but then when I'm thinking about me, it's for you. Because they say, well, then you feel less alone if you're always, 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 always on my on your mind. Sometimes other people out there, the people that are sound asleep, they say, why would well, you stop thinking about yourself? You say, yeah, if it was only that, he, he, what were you saying? I sorry, did you say something? Because I was thinking about something I wanted to do later. And then they roll their eyes. And that's my imaginary, no, that's my imaginary partner that's doing that. But so, yeah, I'm glad you're here. I work really hard. I uh, appreciate you checking the show out, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. Thanks.
Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. If you tried the Name Your Price tool yet, it works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. It is time for our episodically modular series, Spice Friends. I believe this is episode 11. And it's episodically modular with a touch of seriality. If you're new or this is your first episode, don't worry. I'm going to catch you up on everything you need to know right now. Uh, because that, that's what episodically modular means, or the, the, the definitions I've decided for those words means you can listen to it in any order. Uh, like this could be your first episode and then you got 10 prequels to listen to. You could listen to those in or, any order. Now, if you are a completist, I mean, it will catch you up on everything, but you could listen to it the second time. Because ideally you're going to sleep through this anyway and drift off. This episode feels... Uh, like it could be a real snoozer. Like I've snoozed down, I've, I've stumbled onto some snoozy snooze, even though it's kind of the whatever the, you know, the, the episode where stuff happens. Not much, well, stuff. So whatever order you can listen to it, I'm going to explain that to you. Just to give you a peace of mind, I'm going to catch you up. So just in case I'm here to help. That's what I'm here to do is this, uh, this is an extra layer of comfort I'm trying to provide. And I always have. So let's get to it, I guess. <laughs> what am I delaying for? So Spice Friends is a tale uh, about a world just like ours, a slightly different. You'd say, is it the same timeline? It's, well, it's a world you're familiar with if you've consumed any pop culture over the past long while. It's a world just like ours, very similar, or it was like ours, just like in some of the movies and in, in, in some fictional sort of stuff where there's like, like, um, like giant um, beings, I think a general non-trademark term is kaiju, large beings, some mammals, uh, like, uh, that even, like, uh, you'd say, are you familiar with a video game like Donkey Kong or another game? uh, There's other, there's video games about it, but there's been films particularly about, like, um, one that may, like a giant, like something similar to a dinosaur but not those dinosaur movies. These beings are slightly more, they have a little bit more personality than, you know, those park movies or world movies. I like those. Uh, So not those movies. These ones are even bigger. So the, like, I guess a normal human reaction would be, these aren't, where do these animals appear in the history of our planet? Because it doesn't really make sense. There must have been some sort of intervening event that caused these. Uh, and, and a lot of different fiction kind of probes that. Where did they come from? Why are they here? Maybe not why are they here? Because, I mean, you're usually more dealing with it. Because they do things like they step on cars or go after neon signs Maybe they like uh, they tend to yell at uh, d- dams, and sometimes they go they find each other and then they have dance offs and stuff. So living in a world like that, even where it's an infrequent appearance, uh, you'd say, okay, I've gra- I think I have gratitude I don't live in that world because that would add an extra. You know, I already got to get my kid you know kid to school or make my own lunch or make a spreadsheet for work. So, oh boy, I don't know if that's uh, my cup of tea. And so, like, uh, so, so, okay, so we lived in a world where these beings would appear and it wasn't easy, right? Uh, and they'd step on cars, go after neon signs, do stuff. Uh, so they kept appearing and then disappearing. And, uh, like, every, like, it was kind of, uh, like, a, like, a associated generally with what they would call the age of Adams, uh, but not the Adams family, but Adams with a T. But it may be, you know, you phrase it differently sometimes. Offense, the age of offensive atoms. Like if the Adams family became their own thing and were doing stuff and then people would hire them out, nations, and they'd say, hey, Adams family, deal with this. Uh, 
but you know, more with stuff with a half life. And so people knew that those two, they were related, but they didn't quite understand. And so it created a lot of stuff, you know, and then it, when they appeared, they, you know, people were trying to come up with ways to deal with it. At some point, not that long ago, we had elected in the United States, President Smith and Vice President Smith. The first father, daughter, I don't know if they needed to change the laws. Don't ask me that kind of stuff because I don't know the answer of like, uh, but it was President Smith and Vice President Smith. Uh, President Smith was, they were both already pretty famous and well-liked and they had great leadership qualities. And President Smith was forced to deal with one of the big, the big dinos type ones, uh, pretty frequently and, and he like it kept escalating. Now, meanwhile, he was also working with another planet, planet zipper for a longer term solution. But president Smith actually ended up, uh, because this one just kept coming back because of again, fission fusion stuff, Adam age, it, this one kept coming back. Uh, Cause there was even people in president Smith's own administration working on, using the, the, this Adams family analogy offensively. And that kept bringing the big ones. And so President Smith had this serum that enabled him to become a big one. Uh, and he, like, at first they said, okay, President Smith already had, like, we, like there was a lot of uh, cost at first. Uh, and maybe that also drew over his decision. But people thought, oh, he's going to have a dance off. He'll fix everything even though now he's like 80 stories tall and uh, partially become some sort of giant dino type thing. And, but he, what he did was he led all of the big ones because they were scattered around the globe to this atoll, big ones atoll, and it got them there. And then Planet Zipper like had this way to put everybody in hibernation, the entire planet into hibernation. And uh, it, it, they did that. Uh, and the big ones went into hibernation, and uh, the, 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 so did the whole planet. But they were, you know, because of their metabolism or whatever, because they're larger, it took them longer to wake up. And so we wo awoke as a planet and then started renegotiating a lot of stuff of ways of living after you've been hibernated and dealt with the big ones, and then you have a looming thing. And planet, we sent a team of astronauts to Planet Zipper, Trying to figure out how to summarize this faster, but I really can't. But we sent a team of astronauts to Planet Zipper to find a longer-term solution. This hibernation was just kind of a stopgap measure. Meanwhile, you know, governments reorganized. And at some point, Vice President Smith— Now, President Smith, like, uh, I don't know, I think went, went, went to the big—we big, don't know exactly, I guess— uh, and so, but Vice President Smith, she kind of stepped down. She was in hibernation too, but then um, eventually she returned to leadership as president of this collective nation, CN. And she was awaiting the return of the astronauts with the solution. The astronaut, only one astronaut returned from Planet Zipper. And the astronaut said the way to fix everything is through the teaching children and adults uh, to, to express their feelings through song and dance. Which at first didn't make sense uh, because there was a lot of theories that were beyond that didn't make any sense either. And I said, also, that doesn't sound like a good way to deal with giant beings, you know. But he, he said, trust me. And uh, it ended up working. It created these giant spice based beings. Again, it had a whole, there's a whole complicated, even more whole complicated backstory with lots of details or world building, you know. There's TV shows, breakfast cereals, all that stuff. But by teaching people to express themselves in their strong feelings, that made these spice friends came. And the spice friends would kind of have these dance-offs with the big ones. And again, that caused its own issues. Um, but sometimes they would like kind of fuse and fly away or whatever. Then uh eventually people used human beings used this chaos as advantage to kind of uh, do more stuff like take more stuff and and there was different plans they didn't work out just like human beings even the president president smith and the astronaut now known as astro you know you'd lose sight of things because again it's it is hard to kind of return to the idea well i just got to express my like because uh, nothing works immediately right 
but we just express ourselves through song and dance and everything's going to work out fine. Uh, and so again, you'd go to the, cause it's not a solution so much, uh, I think is what we were learning. It was a thing. And again, it's like, wait a second, I don't understand. And, and then, you know, when you're human, your default mode is to be a human being. So again, that is extra layer. Now, also, the astronaut and the president were just as valuable as the rest of us. That's one thing. The second thing we found out was, like, the astronaut made some poor choices on the way to Zipper. And also, he discovered that planet Zipper was a planet, of like, of a collective being that could also butt off into individual beings. It was the last planet of its kind. So I guess there was, like, other planets with collective, this type of species of collective being. But they all slowly, they dealt with the big ones and the big ones more so dealt with them. And part of it is the strength of the collective feelings, possibly. Again, this is all theories. And, but this planet Zipper had discovered Earth and it really loved Earth. Like, uh, in a way, I guess that spans a spectrum of feelings. They just liked watching Earth and seeing Earthlings. They weren't a collective, they weren't an individual being, even though some of them were budding off occasionally and they would observe earth and eventually they saw that earth was impacted by these big ones too. And so they said, well, maybe we should intervene because we love earth so much. But they also discovered that, wait a second, when we were focused on earth, we weren't having problems with the big ones or as big a problems. And that something about Earth, Earth's feelings, eventually we discover in the story that's thus been told that the big ones don't quite know if they're attracted or they consume or they're sustained or they, but human feelings impact them strongly and zipper, zipperian feelings. And so then you had a situation where we have planet Earth, they got these big ones walking around, still pretty chaotic. Planet Zipper wants to get through and um, keep the, you know, they're the last planet of their kind and they love Earth. So they kind of came up with this thing along with some of the leaders of Earth that wasn't President Smith that, hey, why don't we just get some sort of compromise where we'll help? Because otherwise, like if you, if you don't work with us, we got to make sure our planet gets by, right? Uh, and we got to keep the big ones on your planet and we'll keep our feelings focused on your planet. So, but we could do that in a way where you just kind of, it, it's like a somewhat cooperative, but with an ultimatum. And obviously Earth didn't like that uh, because it actually like created a lot of malaise uh, because people said, well, so I got to kind of keep my, like, uh, like our feelings are going to be kind of moderated by Planet Zipper or something like that. I don't even know, but like, uh, that's a, the basic gist of it is keep your feelings in check uh, and everything will be fine. Just listen to us. But what happened was like, uh, and again, I'm not an expert on this. This is history that I'm recounting that's been all vocally told. I don't have written history of any of this stuff. Also, by the way, pretty complicated because it's happening on alternative timeline. And I don't know if you tried to communicate with anyone in this timeline, but try to do, try getting your information from another timeline. It's, uh, it's, I don't know how they did it with that, uh, one show with, uh, with the, with the people and the jet skis and stuff. But I say, well, that's gotta be tough. So where was I? Nowhere. (laughs) Once again. Okay. So we were building and building and building. And then eventually people turned back to president, president Smith and, um, the, and Astro, they were out of power. They were actually like considered jokes. Uh, and because all the other leaders is a strong leaders that considered themselves to be strong of arm. They said, we're going to work with zipper. We're the, you know, like we'll, we'll keep things the way we like it. Uh, and those two are a joke. And, and, but eventually people found their way back to saying, wait a second, when I express my feelings, uh, I have a positive, like in a positive way, if I have an outlet for my feelings, like living a life lacking in feeling, you know, or stuck in your feelings is like, it's not like a, what works best. 
maybe, I don't know. Again, this is just, I'm putting my words to it and basing it on my experience and what I've observed in this other fictional timeline that happens within my brain. So that even makes it more complicated. But so that by, uh, that people like expressing their feelings in a healthy way, not easy. And through joy, the joy of song and dance, even when it's a mirthy feeling, it feels good. Or other means. Again, they expanded upon this idea. And then that's when the president, Smith, and uh, Astro realized, wait a second, it's not fission or fusion or uh, half-life material used in an offensive way. It's our inherent feelings about that fact that is what like is related to these big ones. That's when they realize the big ones are not interested in uh, those type of materials uh, that a band would say are radioactive uh, in like between dance beats or whatever. The the big ones are interested in our feelings, and our feelings just happen to be deep latent ones, probably strongly related to that because of. Uh, you know, just because of implications, obviously. And so, like, big, big, you know, big beings, big feelings, even though the feelings, you know, keep it on the down low, uh, they said, okay, this is about feelings and not about fission or fusion. There you go. Put that on a T-shirt. It's about feelings, not fission. It's, but it is actually, and then it'd be more complicated. But uh, so as they discovered this, and then they kind of got back into this process of song and dance and expression, like they re- like Zipper was like, wait a second, so you're not going to listen to what we're doing? You're kind of going to force our hand. And then they said, well, what if we buy? They, they didn't have many options, Earth. Uh, and it, I think Zipper started building some sort of device, like a, some sort of um, beacon system or amplifier. Uh, to get closer and closer to earth. And so we were, the president, like a great leader does, like, like similar as Jean-Luc Picard said, I don't know what to do. I know we have to maybe trust, uh, we have to keep trying, even though we don't know the results or even how we're going to get to the results. Uh, And so she decided, well, we'll have like an Olympic type event between the Spice Friends and the big ones to, um, by time, but like, it was also like, if we don't, if we, um, if we, if we buy enough time, we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll win the Olympic event. Uh, but it didn't seem like, I don't like, uh, and then the president realized if the Olympic event is never completed, there's multiple events, but the last thing was this relay race. Right. And she realized if the relay race is never completed, none of the big ones or the Spice Friends complete the relay race, like it takes them forever, then the then kind of she was still buying time, waiting for a solution to kind of prevent present itself. And that's kind of where we left off, more or less. So that what hap- where we are is, oh, also the big ones returned. So there's three kinds of uh, giant beings, okay? The original big ones, uh, the Spice Friends, which are, I don't want to use the term good or bad, but, rep, you know, representative of strong feelings, I would say. And the Spice Friends are more representative of positive feelings. The big ones are representative of feelings. Uh, either one, if you get too caught up in your feelings, you know, you're going to make a choice. You know, their feelings, they're, they're meant to be felt. And, and so... And then there's a third set of big ones, which are kind of fused big ones in Spice Friends together. And they had been away. And so we, I guess we don't know what's going on other than we're out on a plane in the middle of nowhere. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of humans gathered there in these villages, kind of expressing themselves through song and dance and feeling and there's the big ones, and Zipper's getting this device closer and closer to Earth. And we got to, you know, obviously uh, things are headed in a certain direction. But, I, I, you know, as the president always says, she says, all will be well, just like Emma Otter used to say. It's just a matter of trusting her leadership and, uh, like, the, our ability to have our feelings and go into the unknown together. But speaking of unknowns, you know, one thing I don't know is how someone can be so generous, so charming, so devastatingly 
I mean, handsome, but I was trying to think of something else because it's just like, uh, whose charisma and really even your, your, your handsomeness really, and I'm not saying this, I really mean it to the depth of my core exudes from your heart and your spirit and not your outsides. Uh, like, like I, I really genuinely believe that your eyes light up the room because there's something coming out of you, or maybe it's coming into you and out of you at the same time. And that's a person that uh, takes the time to drive here from Los Angeles, ideally doesn't drink, you know, uses the restroom and then doesn't drink any water two hours before he gets here, and then d- dresses in like a Tyvek suit with booties. Well, not Tyvek, because we discovered that was too noisy. It's actually a suit I designed made of... um moving blankets, uh, so it doesn't really fit him or, but he makes it work anyway. And, uh, he looks like, like a, a, like a, like a poorly dressed beekeeper in a, uh, but a beekeeper suit made of, uh, moving blankets, uh, but they keep falling off him, but he still comes back all the time. That's the new, that's my newest invention though. It's Mr. Antonio Banderas. The friends beyond the binary is the ladies and gentlemen, the boys and girls. It's time to get spicy with spice friends. Sizzle. But miss, thank you for your kind words, Scooter. Uh, you bring me joy as well, and the listeners too. It is a joy of connecting with all of you in the deep dark night that exudes from my heart and my spirit. Wow, that sizzled me. So thank you. This is Mr. Antonio Banderas, and this is Spice Friends. Okay, this is uh, Madam Prez, I guess. uh, And uh, we've got a conundrum here, and I'm not seeing, once again, we're in a position. I don't know if the details really matter anymore. I'm trying to record this uh, for... Not for posterity, I guess I've learned that this communication method and letting someone else listen to it where I feel unguarded and safe to express my ideas, it, it's been working as part of our process, but I guess this will be recorded for posterity. But even in figuring out the solutions now of what to do, do the details matter as much as... um? where we're feeling and what we're going to do about it and how we feel about that. So I guess thinking about this communication through this part here, I don't know if we need to communicate as much of the details, but maybe at the end. But I can talk about the fact that it's like we're in a place... My father used to like this song from that can't get there from here. I think that was the the hook. Maybe he didn't like it, and I liked it. But and we're in that we can't. We want like uh we we're stuck in trying to compromise and build some sort of compromise that that we don't see be able to see a way again to get to. But also it's kind of this thing of like wanting to go back to a time that never existed or go forward into a future that is fictional and cannot exist. It's like we can't get there like because it's like, oh, well, what would be the ideal solution is like a pretty big one's time. Or but is that even that's not a place we could get back to? Did it even really exist, even though it existed? Maybe. But like the fission fusion, you know, was what brought the big ones here, our feelings about that. Uh, And also it's kind of like now Zipper, we we don't have like a lot we can do. It's kind of like uh, they've taken away, we're in a sandbox, I don't know, (laughs) Astro who said, just think up an analogy that doesn't make any sense. And maybe you'll find the right way. And again, don't focus on the details, but uh, I do feel like we're, we're children, feelings-wise, and uh, like we're in a sandbox. All our toys have been taken away. 
and uh, Zipper's watching us and saying, go ahead and play. And you say, well, I was used to playing with that toy or that one. And I don't know if I want to play when you're telling me to play. And I would rather, and, and also like, uh, and you're saying I can't do anything else. Um, and, but yeah, like, uh, like you're almost like you're making me play as a job for you and you're getting something out of it. I don't know. Like, it's like a, my play is not entertainment for you was if, I, but a child can't put that into words, but also, I mean, maybe they can, they say, well, I'd rather play with toys or I'd rather play alone or I'd rather play when I feel like playing and zipper saying, nope, you're going to play in that sandbox period of end of story. Then we'll have dinner when I feel like you're done playing. And they said, well, what if I d decide not to play? And they said, well, we could like that. Believe it or not, the act of not playing is uh, for us. So you will be playing. And they said, well, what if I decide to, to, uh, to, to, to get out of the sandbox then and not play the, in that way? And you say, well, you don't have that option because, uh, sandbox is, uh, you're, you're in the sand. You don't have that. We're not going to allow. And I say, okay. And you say, wait a second. They kind of like, uh, so we say, oh, well, I'm not so sure I'm comfortable with that. Uh, but I'm feeling like those kind of, then that brings up feelings, right? Even pre sandbox feelings. And I say, well, can't we work something out, uh, and, uh, because otherwise I will like be in a place where it's like, I'm kind of flailing my arms, like is how I would be feeling and making loud noises instead of playing. Wouldn't you rather, what, can't we reach a compromise where I want to be here playing? Uh, I guess it, cause I am an adult, uh, right. Even though I'm, we're placed in a position where, uh, and they say, also, I don't think you, I think you're underestimating because there's something else with zipper that, uh, I sense and other people sense that there is a sense of, uh, they're there. They have feelings that they're not being honest with us about and that those feelings are kind of, uh, influencing them. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's like, what, uh. What, like, I don't want to have to, we, we don't, like, can't we work this out? But again, I guess what I'm most concerned with right now is this intractable, because in some sense, I don't want to work things out, right? Uh, I say, I want to, like, uh, and I can't quite get past that either, is that I don't want to work stuff out. So Planet Zipper, I guess the details or the summary they say they can, um, they say we could go back to working this out where we kind of perform for them and just be ourselves within certain contexts or that, that now they have this ability or they're almost finished with this ability, but even then it'll probably work to, um, like just go back to the high, they said, because they said they voted and they didn't, they said, you know, we could come to earth, uh, or we could send some budding off zipper ins to earth, uh, and then try to, but then we said the big ones are already there, or we could project ourselves onto earth or whatever. But they said, what we realized is we could just keep putting you in hibernation over and over again, because what we really need is your humanness. But the, like, maybe, you know, cause we said, well, you'll probably devolve. Like if you keep, if you go through this long period of hibernation, then you wake up and we let you be human for a little while. Then we re like, like, so a constant cycle of hibernation and humanity. And they said they've been running models there and that that is probably the solution. They said, if it's not, they can always change their mind. And so that would be the, like, uh, that's what we're, they're saying for us is like, uh, if you get out of the sandbox, that's what's going to happen. We'll just put you to bed, I guess. You'll have to go to bed and go to sleep. And say, but it's two in the afternoon. Oh, well. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. So we don't know what else to do. Like we're, oh, and they also kind of, the big ones, they're having like this conference with all three groups. 
but they're very static. Uh, and we say, yeah, so, and, and so we don't know, like, so that's where things are at. Uh, and I know I have one other choice, I guess, uh, but I'm not sure how that choice fits in, um, with things. And, and so, yeah, uh, Astro, I guess I'll just turn it over to you and see, and, and, you know, like we're playing a waiting game, I guess. Okay. So this is Astro here. And, uh, yeah, I guess, like you said, Madam President, uh, uh, the details don't matter. And, it's tough to compromise when you don't feel like you have any power in the compromise, like you said. And you don't feel like you have any options, and we don't want to be put to bed. Uh, but also that, that those are the feelings that come up, like strong feelings for us, right? Uh, dismay, frowny face, uh, oh, you know, a face of like, uh, like that Munch painting. And just wanting to thrash around and yell and uh, very infantile, I would guess, say, say. But also that Zipper is still worried about things. But also, Madam President, I feel like you're not being honest with me. And I know I'm not being honest with myself. Uh, and also thinking about... Uh, okay, well, what ha what happens next, correct? What happens next and where, like, like we are going to have to uh, take action. And I know that, uh, like, uh, Zipper's probably feeling the same way. Like, maybe we're just buying time. And I feel like we do kind of have some ideas, unfortunately, of what actions to take. But then that brings up uh, unfinished business here on Earth, I guess, is what I've been avoiding. But I think what you're avoiding, too, Madam President, if you don't mind me saying so, is that whatever you're not telling me, I can sense, and I want to say this in a way that doesn't feel like an obligation, but that right now you understand how to be in a process of uh, creating solutions or finding solutions without having to— the world needs leadership like that, Madam President. I can return to the process and say, hey, this process works, uh, even though we keep forgetting it, even though my actions right now are in the process of avoiding exactly what I'm talking about. But that, uh, so let me see if I could describe it in terms. Uh, I know something's going on with you and that maybe you have some solution in your mind that has some sort of stakes that you, because, so you don't want to reveal it. But I can sense that the part of it is that you will, won't be here to help lead us anymore. I can sense uh, that, uh, I don't know if you're planning on going to Zipper or doing something or saying, hey, I'll come to Zipper. Or, I can't quite, I can't figure it out. Uh, and I've let go of trying to figure it out. Uh, but I know, I sense that. I sense something's going on with you. And I would say the, one of the solutions is, uh, you have to be here to teach other people and to be an example so other people can learn to lead like you've led us. And there are people cropping up. At the same time, I know that I'm avoiding something big, too, and having this uh, what feels like a, a, a timeline to a solution, to a solution or t a timeline to change, I, I guess. Uh, things will change, clearly, maybe, and it seems like a big unknown. I, one thing I do know, Madam President, even though I don't know what's going on with you, I know what's going on with me is that I'm avoiding something. And what I've been avoiding is, uh, is more and more people have come out to, to participate in the process of expressing our feelings and wondering why the big ones aren't reacting to them. But people collectively feeling relief and then again waking up the next day with the knowledge uh and then needing to express their feelings or other feelings again and again and again. 
more and more people have come to participate and they've invited me to participate with them, including families of uh, my team that went to Zipper. And while I've greeted them, I have not joined them in song or dance or artistic expression, drawing, singing, crawling around, playing, talking, cooking. They've invited me multiple times because uh, I know I have to uh, be honest with them, right? Uh, Be honest that I've made some mistakes and then moved to a solution. So that's what I need to go and do now and say, hey, I, I, uh, I, my choices have impacted you. And, uh, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, what do I need to know? I, I was wrong. You know, those kind of things. And express my feelings. And then, uh, you know, and I've been doing it, I guess. Uh, that's why I'm ready to move forward now. Even though I'm not 100% confident, I will. And again, having the looming unknown, but, the, you know, the, the, like almost like a countdown. I know I have to do do this, uh, uh, not just because of the unknown, but because we're stuck. And maybe this will, maybe again, process of being unstuck. So that's where I'm at, Madam President, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, Astro, well, uh, we had a conversation that you didn't record uh because it was so personal and and, uh, and 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 but it also moved you towards the solution and theories with uh some of the other and again yes you know I'm holding on to something too so maybe I should talk about that first instead of talking about the details but that uh cuz I guess the details aren't something we're all comfortable with but yeah things with my father uh, um, have been complicated for me, right? Because he did leave me with something, and I don't know. Even I'm, I'm presuming it will allow me to become like as he was. Uh, and I'm just not sure, or I wasn't sure how, what that would do, right? Uh, like or how that would, um, right, like that, how that would, um, yeah, like you're saying, I'm torn, because it's like you're saying I I should stay here and lead Earth, uh, but my father was the true, truest hero, and to me, and now you're saying it would be more heroic for me to stay here and be a leader then use use what my father left me, which is only to be opened. Like, uh, so, I mean, he left me instructions and, and they said, to just, you know, wait, uh, just wait, 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 wait. But we did come up with a plan. And again, we're still in disagreement about how to implement that plan. But you said, wait a second. And again, we have teams of, and it's so funny how we found this. This didn't occur to you until we got to the point where you had made, made fixed some things. And I'm still struggling with this thing with my father, but at least admitting to you that it's a struggle and that maybe you're right, but then what do I do about it? Because I'm being pulled towards this one thing, right? Uh, I have to do this. And you're saying you you don't have to, or could someone else do it, or, or whatever it is, or what if it's not what you think it is? And then it's like, what could it possibly be if it isn't what I think it is? Uh, and is it just another red herring then? Though the feelings in the Spice Friends aren't a red herring, even though they've gone silent still. And we that was one of the things we tried to get their attention or keep expressing our feelings and maybe they're growing in power or maybe they're in the same kind of stuck thing of not knowing what to do. But you kind of came up with the thing. Uh, you said, okay. And again, working with our team said, okay, they're planning on using this amplifier or this series of beacons as a way to keep earth snoozing and to keep, you know, keep, uh, bugging us or whatever. 
And that's pretty clear that that's what they're up to. And you said, okay, there's a couple possible theories that we've been working on and that the teams have been working on. And one of those, you said, well, okay, support systems. Like, Earth is what everything Zipper is saying is that Earth is their support system. And uh, that they need us, uh, like, uh, in, 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 uh, like uh, they need us to, to be the outlet for their feelings or whatever. Like in some sense, I don't think, I don't really know under all this stuff, how it works in a one-on-one -on -one setting, but that they're going to put us, they're projecting onto earth and they're going to use this thing as a projector to put us in hibernation. But you said it must work both ways, right? Like your sense is that, uh, like it's a support system, right? They're, they're going to be, or may, that, that even like this was existing in some other form, that was how they had all this easy way to observe Earth and how this device came together. I mean, which is a big device. You said maybe there was a nanotechnology or something. You know, we, again, the details don't matter. Uh, what are we going to do, right? But that... uh we could, if we could use the device in some way to separate us uh, from Planet Zipper, uh, to isolate us or to isolate Zipper, is there a way we could do that? And how would we do that? And and again, we brainstormed, and again, the, and then the idea came out of our delusional thinking, right? Uh, that we were both behaving in a slightly delusional way in that maybe that's a part of our history or part of who we are. And that, again, that is almost where the Spice Friends came from was like, uh, the things that exist below, you know, below the surface of the delusion or the sky reflecting the sun. We were like someone that thought the sun was in the sea or the pond. And, uh, like then you say, well, how can like how can I go fishing in the sky or whatever it is? I can't go in that water because the sun's there. There's probably some myth like that. Uh, we were unable to see past uh, the projection and the, the, the delusion we had con con to the depths below. And uh, and again, that maybe that's the thinking. Even though Zipper's a different type of being than us. Uh, they seem to think this is going to work and it's not going to work. And we tried to explain it to them. And they said, well, we don't have a choice at this point. Uh, so if you can't think of something, then we're going to have to, you know, use this hibernation method. And then we won't have to worry about it. And you won't have to worry about it. It's a very nice solution. You sleep, uh, you wake up, you kind of restart things, uh, Again, we'll give you time to, re, you know, like like a repopulation time. And then, you know, we'll back to hibernation. We'll let nature take its course with hibernations in between. And again, we tried to explain to them the camp pot. And they said, okay, well, two, we'll give it two or three tries and then we'll reset. Uh, and then our individualism said, hold on. Well, no, 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 you're not going to, you know. And again, we couldn't keep this a secret from the world because we had to keep expressing our feelings through song and dance. And as we did that, now I feel like the, the Spice Friends and the big ones are more active. There's some sort of motion going on. And we're trying to communicate with them to get them to do something. But it's like right now it's figuring out uh, if we can send something or do something to separate ourselves from that planet, uh, uh, again, and just cut it off. Uh, or is that delusional thinking? I don't know. Uh, but that's the details currently. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Well, oh, Madam President, it's me again. And so, uh, well, since our last thing, I don't know. Um, I guess uh, they've uh, Planet Zipper showed us another side to themselves uh, while we delayed and debated, and uh, um, yeah, and it's like uh, 
they they showed another side to themselves, and now our feelings are stronger that we should just d- deal with them. And we have an idea of a plan. You admitted to me that you had this device of your father's or this box, uh, and that presumably there's some sort of serum or something in there that will uh, turn someone into a big one. And we have to believe that there's two options. Again, we've found this delu- this delusion option working with it to the greatest. I mean, everybody on the planet wants to work together. It's that what if we could send something back uh, through the beacon? We're, we're pretty sure we can do that. Uh, but also uh, send two things back, uh, like or something back with everything. Because it, like whatever, like very similar to what started all this here on Earth, uh, like what if there's a way to create a like something similar to an asteroid belt, right? Uh, this is what we're going to try that will separate us from zipper forever and, uh, and kind of create a block, uh, and they'll have to deal with their problems and we'll have to deal with the big ones, but also sending someone through that's changed to me. I mean, it's, it's what we've decided or I've decided and you've kind of decided, but no, 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 I'm still pretty much just Astro. But I'll go through, like, if we this works, it should work, even though it doesn't seem like it, that I can change, use your fa- whatever your father left uh, to become a big one and s- there f- to get back to Zipper somehow, either through the device or through feelings or through projection, whatever it is. Uh, and at the same time, like, you take their devices with them and use that as a foundation to create a cl- cloud, I guess like a a cloud of confusion or delusion or something, somewhere between Zipper and here that separates us permanently. Now, that'll probably, unfortunately, doesn't feel, that's the hardest part. It doesn't feel okay, though. It's like, uh, I mean, there's the whole idea, will it work? But those are the details that I'm just communicating, not that the details matter. It's like, what if it does work? Uh, what does that mean for Planet Zipper? And what does that mean for us? We still have all the big ones. And we, we still have, uh, we don't even know what it's in your father's thing. We're going to open it. And I wish the big, like, uh, I wish it was clear, but I it, like, it's like, uh, is like, this is one of those situations where it's like, what's more important? I guess you would say, Madam President, like, should we just keep going into the unknown? Because, I, like, I, I think separating us from that planet, but per, but, but without a, I think is good, like, to have the boundary, but not to force the boundary, right? Uh, to say, hey, you're ne- you can't have contact with us uh, through this thing. You deal with your stuff. Uh, I mean, that's normal, interpersonal stuff totally makes sense, but this is a whole planet in the last planet. Uh, but what if we, I don't know, Madam President, like what if we check the device and try that, but also let the big, like really let the big ones know. I know they can already feel it, but see if they have an answer. Maybe it's that, like we're expressing our feelings now. Maybe we have to express some of our needs or the gravity or maybe the big ones are working on it because they're close together. I don't know. Let me know, Madam President. Okay, well, uh, it's Madam President here back. Uh, President of the world, Hardy Har. Okay, well, here's where things are. Uh, they didn't quite work out as uh, expected. And they haven't worked out for anybody because... We used to, we opened the thing and it was not a serum to change someone. It was a beacon. And we had somehow, again, talk about layers of delusion. We had forgotten that there was one other, it had died down again. And again, I guess all the theories of the team collecting the data had said that's probably one of the 
big ones, f- fused big ones, was that there's another, there was another large big one out there, and we had misinterpreted that data, and this beacon called them back, uh, and called them out uh, of uh, wherever they were, but not just here, but on Planet Zipper too. And uh, we're trying to, at the same time, uh, uh, we also talked to the, we we talked to the big ones and the Spice Friends and the fused ones uh, and said, what are we going to do? We don't know what to do. And we don't know how to communicate with you, but we feel like you sense our feelings. Maybe you sense something more. And we don't need a clear answer. We, we need some help from you uh, because we're not, we have a way to deal with this, but it doesn't feel like the best way. And again, we're in the unknown. And they seemed very responsive. Uh, and there seems to be something working with them. But unfortunately, we created a new problem. And is it best, uh, like, uh, it, like, so now, like, uh, we have a really, really, really big one, independent of all this thoughts and feelings, somehow present or, you know, appearing on both planets and, uh, pretty much, uh, it's going to, I guess, would cause the Zipbarians uh, to react uh, once they get things under control there. Or, you know, they're, 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 uh, we're trying to communicate with them too to say, hey, well, let's fix this. I guess the, the, the big one, it has uh, made its, it was looking at first. Uh, and um, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's got this cloud around it. So we haven't been able to get a lot of details, but it's very loud and steamy or whatever, or some sort of shell too, like a, whatever, like, uh, and, uh, it's coming here to the plane and, uh, I guess we're waiting. Now we may have to get hibernated because then they'll hibernate all the big ones and, and the spice friends too. But we have to believe there's a way to fix this uh, when this thing gets there. And that Zipper, like now Zipper knows we want to help them too. But because they watched all this unfold, right? We we could have, we had the chance uh, briefly to just to just let Zipper. And, and again, we, like they could try to hibernate us, but we could also just as easily use this pulse that we've designed and send our feelings back through and create this separation, this cloud, this belt, uh, asteroid belts. Because it turns out that it's like closer to zipper, there is some something, I don't know, that's science stuff. But we're, So we have to work together now, and we have to work together now because of our mistakes, uh, interestingly enough, because we made... Choices just based on us and wanting, like, uh, feeling like the only way to work it out was for ourselves alone or for Zipper's self alone. And now we're in a position where we're dependent on one another. It looks like you could make a rash decision, but that doesn't mean it's going to work out. Uh, so we go yet again into the unknown together to try to solve this while we're still expressing how we feel about it. And now Zipper's expressing how they feel about it. And it does seem to be that the big ones uh, are all getting excited and the fused big ones and the Spice Friends. So we don't feel like we have to deal with this alone either. I guess that's under, it's like, oh, if this giant big one gets there, we don't know, it's kind of unexpected. It's kind of an unknown too, but we have uh, a team here and they do feel like they have caring for us and something changed in them when they knew we were, we were conflicted and unwilling to move into to the la you know, a conflict, like, a to move against our values, even if it was what we thought was best for us versus the unknown. So just like Emma Otter says, I know all will be well. I don't know how it will be well. But I'm recording this, and I'm confident when this big one arrives and whatever's happening on Zipper, that we can reach a solution together. 
uh, and maybe we're even, cl I feel that's strange. Uh, and maybe it's just my leadership qualities that people point out. Uh, I feel like even though things are, uh, have, uh, ratcheted up in the unknown that we're closer to it all working out. I don't know if Emma Otter would have said that, but maybe that's what she meant when she said all will be well. Like, uh, even though we're approaching a new precipice, uh, I feel like that precipice is uh, that there's an invisible, invisible bridge or something there, or that uh, looking over it, I'll see, oh, that's where I dropped my keys. Uh, so thank you, Emma Otter, for telling me all will be well, even though I don't always understand it. Good night. Uh, thanks. I want to thank everybody who supported the podcast on Patreon recently. Tim... Raphael and Erica, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Erica, Kyle and E, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Anne, Richard and Troy, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Mars, Robert and Ryan, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. John, Natasha and Jessica, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Will, Michael and Paul, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Adrian, Stephen, and Madison, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. James, Benjamin, and Mary, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Emily, Fiona, and Sarah, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kim, Ramona, and Marceline, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Chris, Becky and Roseanne, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Ashley and Sam, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Could not do it without all you supporting the show. I really appreciate it. Sleep with me. Here's a free podcast because the people that support the show directly on Patreon or support our sponsors. That's like literally how we'll be here for free twice a week. And uh, also, it would be great if you, if you want to support me and the podcast in a free way, uh, you could sign up for our newsletter, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash badmagic. It's not about the podcast. It's not about Patreon or supporting the podcast. It's about supporting the members of our communities who are experiencing homelessness. And we'll be doing a lot of fun stuff on there. So check it out. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, oh, and here's a talk you in sponsor. That's how we got it for. for over 450 now in the archives uh, for free. Thanks uh, and good night. Hey, everybody, Scoots. You know I have a mattress I love. It's from tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. I sleep in the Helix Dusk Lux. It is so cozy. I love getting into bed every single night. And it's a perfect mattress for me because I took the Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep and got matched with it. Helix Sleep has a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete, matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. And I took the Helix quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux because I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach, I sleep hot. And it meets my needs perfectly. So take the quiz and find out what mattress is going to be perfect for you. If you're looking for a mattress, all you should do is you take that quiz, helixsleep.com slash sleep. You order the mattress you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to the mattress store again. And Helix is awesome. You don't just have to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress week of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep Medicine is a go-to solution for improving sleep. And you just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. You take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They even have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's Helix. Sleep. Sleep.com slash sleep. Good night, everybody.